Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 31st of October. Apple state sponsored attack warning triggers political war in India. Canada India ties facing a difficult moment, says Canadian Foreign Minister. And Afghans reluctantly return to Taliban rule as Pakistan moves to expel illegal immigrants. And now for all the details, a political controversy erupted on Tuesday after some opposition leaders in India alleged a state-sponsored hacking attack on their personal smartphones. Taking to X, app leader Raghav Chadda, who was among the lawmakers who received the warning email from smartphone manufacturer Apple, alleged that the snooping was part of the broader attack on opposition parties by PM Modi's government ahead of the general election. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi reiterated a similar stance. IT Minister Ashwini Vaishno, however, refused to the claims and said whenever the opposition has nothing else, they pedal the accusation of surveillance against the government. Some people who are fighting against it, but we are not afraid of it. We are not afraid of it. We will not go back. If you have to do so much tapping, there is no difference. I don't have any difference. If you want my phone, I will give you the phone and take it. These compulsive critics, they have only one habit. Whenever they don't have any major issue, the only thing they'll say is surveillance. This they have tried few years back. We conducted a proper investigation. The matter was supervised by the Honorable Judiciary also. Nothing came out of that investigation. Meanwhile, Apple has claimed the threat notifications may be a false alarm. In a statement, the smartphone manufacturer said it does not attribute the threat notification to any state-sponsored attacker, adding that detection of threat attacks are often imperfect and incomplete. We are unable to provide information about what causes us to issue threat notifications, as that may help state-sponsored attackers adapt their behavior, the statement added. Moving on, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday paid floral tributes to Sardar Vallabhai Patel at the Statue of Unity as he led the nation in the celebration of 148th birth anniversary of India's first Home Minister. Addressing a gathering on the occasion, PM Modi highlighted the abrogation of Article 370 in Kashmir and said the decision must have pleased Patel wherever he is. Sardar Patel will be giving his blessings as the wall of Article 370 that was standing between Kashmir and the rest of the country has been demolished. बीते नौ वर्षों में देश ने देखा है कि जब सबका प्रयास होता है तो असंभव कुछ भी नहीं होता है किसने सोचा था कि कभी कश्मीर आर्टिकल 370 से मुक्त भी हो सकता है लेकिन आज कश्मीर और देश के बीच आर्टिकल 370 की वो दीवार गिर चुकी है सरदार साहब जहां भी होंगे सबसे ज्यादा प्रसन्नता अनुभव करते होंगे और हम सबको आशीर्वाद देते होंगे Known as Bismarck of India, Sardar Patel is credited for the unification of more than 500 princely states in India following the partition of the country. The Indian government declared his birth anniversary as National Unity Day in the year 2014. And amid the ongoing diplomatic row between Canada and India, Canada's Foreign Minister 
Melanie Jolly, in a policy speech on Monday, said that the relationship between the two countries is facing a difficult moment, adding that the government stood by its decision to make public the allegations. Jolly said it is important to remember that this is one moment in a relationship that spans decades and is built upon strong connections between people in both the countries. New Delhi and Ottawa have been at increasingly bitter odds since the assertion last month by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that Indian government agents had played a role in the murder of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar in June. However, India has rejected the claims, calling them absurd. Notably, Canada has yet to provide any public evidence to support the claim about Nijjar's killing. And as the clock ticks to the November 1st deadline that Pakistan has set for roughly 1.7 million undocumented migrants to leave, Afghan refugees are returning to Taliban-ruled Afghanistan with a heavy heart. A report. Mohammad Rahim on Monday boarded a bus headed from Karachi to the Afghan border as the clock ticked to the November 1st deadline that the Pakistan government has set for roughly 1.7 million undocumented migrants to leave. 35-year-old Rahim, who was born in Pakistan and is married to a Pakistani woman, said that he did not want to leave, but he has no other option. The Taliban government in neighboring Afghanistan said 60,000 Afghans have returned between September 23rd to October 22nd from Pakistan after it announced on October 4th that it would expel undocumented migrants. Pakistan blames Afghan migrants for terror attacks in the country, calling itself victim of cross-border terrorism. Islamabad has also blamed their involvement in smuggling activities. Pakistan is home to over 4 million Afghan refugees and Afghans make up the largest portion of migrants. A two-day global parliamentary convention held in Tokyo highlighted the plight of vegan minority in China and discussed international responses to rights violations such as forced labor. A report. A two-day global parliamentary convention in Tokyo focusing on human rights violations against the Uyghur ethnic minority in China concluded on Tuesday. The participants discussed the accusations of forced labor and a mass internment campaign targeting Uyghurs in China along with abuses such as forced sterilization and cultural repression which is termed as genocide by some rights groups. Yes, in my area of contemporary forms of slavery, I made a, a discovery last year that we got people have been exploited in, in, in labor and, and otherwise. So I think the situation is quite grave and I do call upon the government of China to protect and promote their human rights. Uh, Countries have a legal responsibility to stop ongoing genocide and all free men have a moral responsibility. So we asking the people, at least for example, is other ordinary people can boycott and the Chinese uh, protect. Because today, for example, is cotton, 25% is cotton globally from Uyghur forced labor. You know, uh, panel, uh, solar panel industry is more than 70 or 47 percent from the Uyghur forced labor. So that's why the, the Uyghur community blames it has been subjected to forced political indoctrination and torture, and they have been prohibited from practicing their religion or speaking their language. China, however, denies the allegations. 
BNP, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, on Monday sent a letter to embassies and high commissions in Dhaka blaming the government, ruling party cadres and the police for the incident of violence surrounding its grand rally on Saturday. The BNP claimed that the rally was suspended as police fired rubber bullets and lobbed tear gas shells. The opposition leader said PM Sheikh Hasina led government's intentions are driven by a deadly agenda to arrest, harass and entangle BNP leaders and followers in legal troubles ahead of of the elections. PM Asina has maintained a tight control since coming to power in 2009 and has been accused of authoritarianism and cracking down on free speech by Western governments. The opposition BNP has been demanding a free and fair election under a caretaker government asking Hasina to relinquish power. And Nepal's snow-capped mountains have lost close to one-third of their ice in over 30 years due to global warming. UN Chief Antonio Guterres said on Monday after a visit to the area near Mount Everest, the world's highest peak. Climate scientists say the Earth's temperature has increased by an average of 0.74 degrees Celsius over the past 100 years. But warming across the Himalayas has been greater than the global averages. I'm here to cry out from the rooftop of the world, stop the madness. The glaciers are retreating, but we cannot. We must end the fossil fuel age. We must act now to protect people on the front line and to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees to averse the worst of climate chaos. The world cannot wait. Well, glaciers in the Hindu Kush Himalaya could lose up to 75% of their volume by centuries and due to global warming, scientists said in a report published in June this year, causing dangerous flooding and water shortages for 240 million people who live in the mountainous region. Climbers returning from Everest have said the mountain was drier and grayer now. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.